So today I'll be talking about arterial leg duplex. Um, a patient is likely to come to you for an arterial leg duplex if they are complaining of claudication. It could be a buttock claudication, thigh claudication, calf claudication. It could also be known, um, another type of pain known as rest pain, which is pain when laying down. You will also see patients with toe ulcers, heel ulcers, um, some sort of ulcers in the foot um, due to arterial disease. So today I have a young lady here. I'm going to be taking a look at a right leg just for the time today. I'm going to first of all externally rotate the knee out, okay? I'm going to start all the way from the groin of the leg. Now when you start from the groin, your goal is to try to get a view of the external iliac artery. So I'm going to go all the way to the groin. I'm going to turn on that artery I'm seeing there. And you can see that your external iliac artery um, dives all the way down, okay? So you're going to go ahead and start with that waveform. All right, so you can see that this waveform is triphasic. Triphasic is a sharp upstroke, reversal flow, and back above the baseline, okay? In a patient with um, significant stenosis, for example, chances are you would see a uh, sharp upstroke and a reversal flow, but sometimes you would definitely not see that uh, third uh, reversal flow. Or the patient would have a rounded peak, okay? So this nice sharp upstroke would be rounded and um, slowly come down, a little bit of damping of a reversal flow. So you wanna keep an eye on your waveform as you come down the leg, okay? So this is nice and triphasic. If I was to scan the external iliac artery and I do not see this nice triphasic waveform, at this point I would be, um, I would feel a lot more comfortable actually going up into the common iliac artery to make sure you've not missed uh, a significant or a moderate mild stenosis in the common iliac, causing you to have to lose some of that reversal flow. Okay, so that's your external iliac artery, and I'm going to. Um, Follow that artery, I'm gonna keep coming down towards the foot. I'm going to get into the common femoral artery. All right. Again, you can see that nice triphasic waveform, okay? You wanna make sure you don't get a biphasic. So this is triphasic one, two, three. A biphasic would be just one, two, okay? A monophasic flow would be just an upstroke without a reversal or a return um, flow, okay? So this is triphasic. You want to keep coming down a leg now. I'm going to come out of the upper here. Your common femoral further splits into your profunda and your superficial femoral artery. So you have your profunda in that image, the posterior artery, and then you have your superficial femoral artery, also known as your femoral artery. Your profunda artery here is also known as your deep femoral artery. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get a view um, away from of the profunda artery. And again, it's nice and triphasic. I'm gonna take that image. Also in that same image, then I'm gonna go ahead and get my femoral artery, the proximal segment of the superficial femoral artery. Okay. And I'm keeping an eye on the waveform. Again, one, two, three, triphasic, okay? I'm gonna slowly come down a leg and every centimeter or two, you want to go ahead and get a nice waveform. Make sure your waveforms are still triphasic. And the moment you scan and get a Doppler waveform again, and you get a biphasic waveform, you want to make sure you follow that artery back up to the groin. Make sure you're not missing anything, okay? And I'm going to follow that artery down. So right now I'm at the mid-segment. I'm going to get a nice waveform there again. And once I get my waveform at the mid-segment, I'm going to head up to the distal segment. I'm right about the distal segment here. I'm gonna get a nice another waveform. All 
All right, again, triphasic waveform, one, two, three. The moment you become a biphasic, which is a sharp upstroke and a reversal flow, you want to uh, make sure you've not missed any um, blockage. And if you end up with just a monophasic waveform, that means you've definitely missed a significant um, stenosis. You want to make sure you trace those arteries back up to make sure that, um, uh, to look for your stenosis. Because at a monophasic waveform, patient definitely has some sort of inflow disease that you have possibly missed in the upper thigh, okay? We're going to go ahead and go into the popliteal artery. So here you have your vein, which is um, at the top of the toe. The vein is up top. The artery is um, below. Um, what I usually would tell you to do is turn on that artery. You want to rock your probe up towards the um, patient's head because you want to try to get as much. Um, I turn my scale down a little bit so I can make sure I fill it up. I'm going to turn my collar gain up as well um, so I can follow that popliteal artery um, up towards the thigh, okay? You want to get your proximal popliteal artery. Again, you have that nice triphasic waveform signal, all right? And then you also want to go ahead and get your distal popliteal. Some places will get a, prox a proximal mid and a distal popliteal artery. You can. Um, just you want to keep an eye, uh, make sure you follow your departmental um, protocol, okay? All right, and now I'm at the distal segment of the popliteal artery. I'm also going to go ahead and get a waveform right at that segment. For the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and move down to the um, calf. When I get my calf artery, and again, this is just a choice that I usually, this is just a personal preference. I like to go um, straight to the distal segment of the calf and um, look for the uh, artery right at the calf. Um, you can, um, in your case, if you'd like, you can um, go from the proximal um part of the um, calf, okay? And that's my uh, posterior tibial artery. I can see it there. I'm gonna go ahead and get a waveform of the distal segment of the posterior tibial artery. I'm gonna adjust my scale. And you always wanna make sure you adjust your scale because if your scale, uh, your velocity scale is too high, you will miss that reversal flow. And you can see it in that image the moment I adjusted my scale, okay? And at this point, you can choose to go up the calf. Yes, you want to go up the calf to get your mid-segment of the posterior tip and do the same thing. You just want to go ahead and keep sliding your pole all the way up, keeping the posterior tibial artery in view. Um, for the sake of time, we're going to pause at that segment. And then I'm going to have a bring a uh, foot straight up. And I'm going to look for the anterior tibial artery, right, also. And you can see it in that image again. It's right there. Um, again, I'm going to get a nice waveform again of the artery. And at this point as well, you can choose to go ahead and follow it up towards her knee as well, okay? You can choose to follow that artery towards the knee. But for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and pause at that. Um, with the perineal artery, um, I also usually find it easier to get it when I am at the anterior tip and I slowly angle towards um, the bed, right? Towards the bed that way. Um, in some patients, you're going to see it easily. I can see it kind of coming in in that image there. Um, but what I usually do, and in some patients, you're not going to see it that easy. So you want to do is go to the mid part of the thigh, of the calf, sorry. And you can run right into it in that segment. You can choose to follow it towards the foot, or you can go ahead and choose to follow it up towards the head. Um, at that time, you can also get your perineal artery. So in this case, I'm going towards her... Um, knee or you can again i'm going back towards her foot okay so you can choose to follow your perineal artery um whichever view um you find it easier to get okay all right so that's the end of this video if you um need to get further readings you can go ahead and pick up this book vascular technology made simple this book has a lot of exam protocols um anatomy information and also um some Students have found it uh, user-friendly when it comes to studying for the board exam. It's also available on Kindle, also on Amazon. Thank you so much and have a good day.